anxiety, loneliness. We're experiencing a mental health epidemic. You know, there, there's obviously a big trauma with a big T and then little trauma with a little T. And, and, you know, being in this pandemic, you know, there's definitely collective trauma. For some, it's the little T. For others, it's the big T. But I think it's safe to say it's been difficult for most everyone. And so how do you think about anxiety, stress, mental health in general, and the role it plays in longevity? Yeah, well, it's really important. Getting back to the cortisol levels, um, your brain controls your longevity. We know this, uh, in my lab, we've manipulated mouse brains, uh, to make them turn on longevity genes. And then the whole mouse is healthy. So, and we just know that the brain is putting out factors that will either accelerate aging or slow it down. So your mental state's important. It's also important for immunity. A beautiful paper was published last week in one of the world's top journals that showed that if you change a few neurons in the center of the brain, again, in a mouse, but pretty interesting that you'll change the amount of circulating def, uh, immune cells in the body. And those immune cells can pick off cancer cells and viruses. And so, you know, I used to, I, I believed that the mind could control the body, but now we just have proof that's actually working and which neurons are doing that. So what does this all mean? It means that you should keep your stress levels down. If you can uh, meditate, I now uh, meditate as often as I have time for. Again, uh, Serena uh, Poon has been a good influence on me in that regard. But if you have the, the big stress, the big T, then you do need some help. And increasingly you can go online and speak with a therapist. And you know, I've seen some really great results from particularly young people who become anxious. You know, in this day and age with social media, with school and college and the stresses of all of that and COVID-19 on top of it, it's really, it's hard to be a young person without the coping skills that we adults have learned. Everyone understands sleep. You need sleep. You can't run on. Is that true? Just to set the, you, you can't run on no sleep. It, well, you, you can, but you'll crash. Plus it's going to accelerate aging as well. The genes that we work on called the sirtuins that control aging, they also control the sleep wake cycle. And so those two things are totally connected. And if you disrupt your biological age, you get older, you'll disrupt sleep and sleep will disrupt longevity. So you just got to keep both of those in check in parallel because they're going to affect you. I was banging my head against a wall for 25 years and no one would listen. My book helped. It's sold close to a million copies around the world. So that was good. But what I'm most excited about is the fact that the younger generation has embraced longevity unexpectedly because. You know, it's stupid me. I thought only old people cared about aging, but no, it's, you know, Gen Y and Gen Z that have realized that humans can achieve anything if they put their minds to it. And we now realize, and a lot of young people realize is that aging begins before birth and every day is important and the clock is ticking and you can slow that down by living well and eating well. And even some supplements that I mentioned, these will slow the process down and the longer they live, the more technology they can be exposed to. So many people who are born around now in the last 10 years can make it to the 22nd century and imagine what's going to be available then if, you know, the last five years has totally changed everything and we can now reverse aging. So yeah, I, that's mostly what excites me is that every day I'm contacted by young people in their twenties and thirties who are excited about what we do and want to join the movement and either get involved in social media or medical research and devote their careers to it. And for the record, again, what is your biological age versus your, uh, your, your real age, if you will? Well, I'm 52 and, uh, my biological age is in my low forties, depending on the, the measurement, but when I'm really good, then I can get it down into the low thirties. But yeah, right now my blood biochemistry, if, it, if you looked at it, you'd say, and you didn't know me, you'd say I'm in my early forties, you know. I'm still waiting for that gray hair to appear. So, so far, so good. The good news is that what I'm, I've been doing to myself, which is listed also in my book, page 304, if you want to jump to that, doesn't seem to be hurting me, which is a good start, but also as I get older, seems to be benefiting me as well.